morning. Praise the Lord to everyone. If you love Jesus, can I ask you to rise and put your hands together and just open up your mouth and hallelujah. shout hallelujah in the room? Hallelujah. Come on, if you came to bless him, won't you just give him a wave offering in the atmosphere? Come on, put a worship on your lips right there. I know it's early for some of you, but can you put a worship on your lips if you would? Let us receive our bishops as they procession in. The executive board, our suffragan bishops, our district elders. Hallelujah. Let us receive them as they enter in. Let us give God praise for our leaders. Come on. Come on. Give God praise for our leaders. The Lord declared that he would give us pastors after his own heart. Come on. Give God praise for our leaders. together. Can we do that? Many of you know this. It just says, I will bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless As our leaders come in, can you put that song on your lips? Johnson, Lady Rhoda Johnson. Bishop elect William Benson, Lady Rachel Benson. Bernice Boyd. Bishop 
Millet, Adrian Burrell, Lady Deborah Burrell. Bishop elect Stephen Foster, Lady Meryl Foster. Come on, saints, give God a hand praise for our candidates. Bishop elect Ryan Hamilton. I will bless the Lord, all my soul, and all Bishop elect Radar Johnson. Our Board of Bishops of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. Come on, saints, put your hands together as we receive our Ecclesia. And we have Bishop Elect Paul Karaja Mithuthia. All right, hallelujah. Kenya District Council. Let us give another hand clap of praise for the I Board of Bishops of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World. Assemblies of the world. Let us receive our former presiders and our present first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Mark C. Talbert, second assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Michael D. Hanna, our speaker for this morning, Bishop Horace E. Smith. Our former first assistant presiding bishop, Bishop Richard E. Young. Treasurer, Assistant Treasurer, General Secretary, and Assistant General Secretary. Now, let us receive the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, the Honorable Bishop Theodore L. Brooks, Sr. Come on, saints, give God a praise for our leader, for God's visionary. For this hour, receive ye him. Come on, let's worship together. Now that our leaders are here, they've led us here. Come on, let's lift our hands and lift our voice and lift up this song of worship. I will bless the Lord.
your hands together and give God a praise that makes the devil jealous, everybody. When Peter, James, and John went to the Mount of Transfiguration, and they were privileged to see Jesus step out of his mortal body and reveal the glory of who he was. It's intriguing now because the two witnesses stepped out of, out of antiquity and revealed what was yet to come. Peter now says something that blows my mind. He said, it's good to be here. Could you just look at somebody and tell them it's good to be here? We may not understand all of the particulars and what God is about to do, but it is certainly good to be here. With that, in this holy moment, this place of miracle, this place of deliverance, this place of consecration, it is my honor to yield through the vehicle of invocation the Honorable Bishop Freddie Jackson, who will be followed by the reading of the Holy Writ, 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5, the Honorable Bishop a. Glenn Brady in that order. Give God a pleasure. Praise everybody. Shall we all lift our voices together in prayer? Father, we're thankful to you that you have allowed us to gather here in your presence. Now, Lord, we're asking you, will you please anoint everything that is said, everything that is done. We pray, Lord God, that your presence, your spirit, your anointing will flow through this gathering this morning. We have come, Lord, to offer these individuals unto you as leaders of this great body, and we pray that as they go forth that you will use them for kingdom service and building and that your will will be perfected in their lives. Bless our preacher for this morning, our bishops, our presiding bishop and first and second assistant. We pray that you will give them wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that they will navigate us through these turbulent times until you meet us in the air. And we thank you, we praise you, we bless you for the great things you've done. For we ask it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, our God and our Savior. Amen. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap for themselves teachers. They will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, and fulfill your ministry. The blessings of the reading of God's word. Praise the Lord again, everybody. All right, we're getting ready to wake you up. Can I get you right there to just put your hands on it right there? Come on, put your hands together. Come on, let's give God praise this morning because he's amazing and he's holy. You know this, I love Jesus. He's my savior.
Stretch your hand over here right now. God, we bind the powers of darkness. We bind it now in the name of Jesus. God, you touch. You touch Jesus. You touch Jesus. You touch Jesus. Touch Jesus. Thank God. Hey God, you touch right now. You touch right now. You touch right now. Father, right now, right now, right now. Right now, God, right now, God. For thy glory, sending your alive in the blood of Jesus. Father, right now, Father, right now, right now, right now. The devil is trying to distract us. The devil is trying to create havoc. But God, you worked a miracle. You're a miracle working God. You're a miracle working God. You're a miracle working God. Tosha. Give them enough room so they can get them out, y'all. Give them enough room. Come on, I need about 50 people just to give God some praise. If you believe he's a God that heals him by son dead you ought to give him praise in the room. Can I get you? If I sort of, I want you to open up your mouth and shout for the miracle. Yeah. Shout for the miracle. We believe all Sutamasia. Yeah. We believe that you're a God yeah. that heals his own. Yeah. He's a healing God. Look at your name and just say he's a God that heals. He's a God that heals. He's a God that delivers. He's a God that sets free. He's a God that breaks chains. He's a God that destroys yokes. Can you put your hands on it and open up your mouth and give God a shout? All right, y'all ready to sing? Can we go back to worship and praise now? Look at your neighbor and say, I think I'm right ready now. I think I'm ready now. I think I'm ready now. Come on, look at somebody and say, I think I'm ready to give them praise now. Y'all go help us give them praise. Come on, if you're ready to give them praise now, can I get you?
favor. Everybody in this place, rest upon your feet right now. Sometimes in the middle of your prayer, the devil will try to cause confusion. But throw your hands up and say, yes, I got it, I got it. Yes, I got it, I got it. Confusion back up. Tumors dry up. Devil know your time is up because I'm looking up. Open your mouth and say, yes, I got it. Yes, I got it. Without any further preliminaries, it is my esteemed pleasure to bring before you a great man of God, one who we esteem with great honor, the Honorable Bishop Theodore Brooks. Put your hands together and give him a praise. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Please remain standing. As God had opened up the doors and allowed us to be able to come here for 107th annual convention. And we thought of, we prayed and asked God, whom shall we have to share the sacred word this morning yeah. on the consecration of our newly elected and appointed bishops. And I asked God, who would he have to bring forth the word? We have great, great speakers all throughout this organization. And might I tell you that it's not about the greatness of an individual. It's not how well that they can hoop. It's not how well that they can shake the mic. But it's about who is being appointed by God for such a time as this. God delayed bishop on my heart even before we were putting the things together. And God says, he is the man that will bring forth the message for today. I don't know what bishop is going to preach. It's not my business. But I do know that he has the temperament and the wherewithal and the absolute concern that you that are being elevated this morning, that you walk with integrity, that you walk with spirituality, that you walk concerning the office. Many of us seek this office, but seek it for the wrong reason. But I know that God has placed upon his heart because he has the personality and the character to be honest and straightforward with you. You might not like to hear some of the words that he will say, but they will help you. They will build you up. They will make you strong. You've reached it now. Now the question is, how will you perform? How will you do? With that being said, brothers and sisters, I want you to give God a praise for his man of the hour, the Honorable Bishop, Dr. Horace Smith. Put your hands together. Come on, give the Lord that praise this morning. Give the Lord that praise. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Uh, Bishop was right. I don't come to hoop, I'm not against it. I don't come to make you shout. But I believe that I'm old enough and called enough to share this word this morning. I'm honored by this organization. I'm honored by this tremendous presiding bishop, Bishop Brooks. Give God great praise for him. To our first and second assistants, give God great praise for Bishop Mark Albert and Michael Hanna. In his absence, to our former presiding bishop, Charles Ellis III, who is connected today with something else, give God praise for him. And the senior bishops, executive board, and EBC, I am thankful to be here this morning. I do ask your prayers. Let me first make a confession. The Lord gave me this word 
in March of this year. And he gave me instruction about it, not just for you, but wherever I go to preach, it must contain this foundation. I'm, I'm old enough to have grown up in the PAW. I can remember the years of being the presiding bishop. And some said he's not really apostolic. Yeah, I, I look, I'm not stupid. And I have to confess to you that when I asked them what it meant to be apostolic, I told them that I'm not apostolic. I refuse to let people and thoughts identify who I am. And you should be the same way. If we're not careful, we will make the thoughts of old the idols of today. If we're not careful, we'll stay just where we were planted 107 years ago. But you know that's not the mind of God. It cannot be. So we must have courage. Someone said that moral courage is rarer than bravery in battle. The ability to speak something that your peers may not agree with, that your colleagues may not understand may not always be the most popular theme, but it is the most indispensable ingredient to change a world that lends itself so difficult to change. I don't come to change the world. I come to speak to my brothers and sisters, and in particular to the men and women who are in front of me, and to all my colleagues that I share the bishopric with. And I hope you will pray with me and for me as I share with you the word God gave me. There are three particular scriptures I want to read in your hearing. You know all of them. And we ask God to bless it. The first one is found in Isaiah 59, verse 13 through 15. It reads thusly. Isaiah says, in transgressing and lying against the Lord and departing away from our God. Speaking oppression and revolt, conceiving and uttering, this is really important, from the heart, words of falsehood. Verse 14 says, judgment is turned away backward. Justice stands afar off. Why? Because truth has been shot in the street. Yeah, that's my rendition. Truth has been shot in the street. And the retainer then says, and equity or integrity was afraid to enter. Brothers and sisters, evil is not simply evil. Its character is to intimidate, to make you afraid. When they lynched our forebearers, it was not a crime against an individual. It was a message to all of us. And so when Isaiah says that truth has fallen in the street, he tells us that the goodness that should rescue the truth was paralyzed because they saw what they did to truth. Yea, verse 15, truth faileth, and he or she that departs from evil makes themselves a prey. And Jehovah saw it, and it displeased him. There was no justice. That's the Isaiah passage. The second passage is Ecclesiastes. You know it in verse, chapter number 3 and verse 1. To everything there is a season. To everything there is a season. And there's a time, not to everything, but to every purpose. We have no time to do everything. We must do purposeful things. Last scripture, Romans 13, verse 11, and that knowing the time. <laughs> Hello. That knowing the time, you know what time it is. That now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our deliverance 
nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off every work of darkness and let us put on the armor of light. If I would use a subject this morning, I would use this subject, the crisis of truth in an age of deception. The crisis of truth, not doctrine. Truth in an age of deception. When the Lord gave me this message, it really had to do with the pandemics, not pandemic, pandemics. And he gave me three references about these three scriptures. Here's the first question. What just happened? You can shout all you want to. But in the last two years, your life has been radically changed. Don't fake it till you make it. What just happened to us? And it's not over. That's the first. Here's number two. What time is it? What time is it? You know that we are on divine schedule, whether you like it or not. When 2020 hit, I was like all of us. We declared it's the year of perfect vision. What a foolish statement. None of us saw this coming. Not the prophets, not the apostles. None of us saw this coming. Do not deceive your own self. We are on God's schedule. God saw it coming. He was not surprised. He ain't surprised now. He's not wringing his hands, wondering what's going to happen. He is El Shaddai. He is Jehovah to sit canoe. He is El Elyon. He is the most high God. He is in charge all the time. He is orchestrating this world. What just happened? Number two, what time is it? Number three, what must we do? Brothers and sisters, please, don't get me wrong. I'm not against shouting. But by itself, it ain't working. I believe in speaking in tongues, but you're not going to speak in tongues these demons away. You got to deal with demons on the level that they are. Listen to me. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We are fighting principalities. We're fighting powers. We're fighting the rulers of the darkness of this world. We cannot use elementary, rudimentary weapons against these demons. Hallelujah. Isaiah spoke to me, and when I read this passage, it was chilling to me. And, and in fact, I read three verses, but look at the, the previous verses. Isaiah says something like this. The Lord's hand is not short that he cannot save. His ear is not heavy that he cannot hear. Why is God upset? Verse 4, because nobody calls for justice. Nobody calls for justice. We call for having church. I'm tired of having church. I'm tired of having church. I want to be church. I want to do church. I want to act church. I want to live church. Stop, keep doing what you're good at and ask yourself, what's the situation in my environment? None calls for justice. Justice, righteousness. God is a God of justice. Not just speaking in tongues. He's a God of justice. For I was hungry. You did not feed me. I was naked. You would not clothe me. I, I was in prison. You did not come see about me. Do not mistake this fact and write this in your notes. The church is the only rescue vessel that's coming for this world. You, you missed it. Ain't nobody else coming. God ain't sending no help but by the church. If the church does not do what it's called to do, it's not going to get done.
we are not just saved. I heard somebody say that. I still got it. Big deal. What you got was a gift. What you got was a gift. You didn't work for it. You didn't earn it. He gave it to you. The fact you have it is, oh my God. The devil's glad. Oh, you can say, yes, I, I'm not against that song. Yes, I got it. Got it. What are you doing with it? How are you using it? What is this? Res the epidemic is not just COVID. Did you notice something? Almost at the exact time that COVID went crazy, videos began to appear of black men shot in the street. I'm going to say it in the PW Convention. I don't care if y'all don't care about it. Look, Floyd was not the first black man killed. They been killing us every day, all the time in this country. And the church is silent. Say their names. Eric Gardner, Michael Brown, Tamir Rice. Say their names. Brianna Stewart, Taylor, say their names. You are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are the deliverance that people need. Ain't nobody else going to deliver but you. I ain't mad at you. I'm mad at me. Isaiah said their feet rush to evil. They make haste to shed innocent blood. Their thoughts are thoughts of iniquity. Destruction is in their path. The way of peace they know not. There's no justice in their goings. They have made crooked paths. And then they quote what we attribute too often to Prince. Yeah, Prince said, y'all know this passage. We grope for the wall like the blind. We grope as if we had no eyes. We stumble at noonday as in the night. We are in desolate places as dead men. We roar all like bears. We mourn sore like doves. We look for justice, but there is none. For salvation, and we don't see it. It is not an indictment. It is a wake-up call to you, to me, and especially to you who now put on a mantle that is not to be misunderstood. I'm going to be nice because one of my senior bishops told me, don't you hurt us. I'm going to tell you this, though. The word bishop can be used as a noun. But that's a weak rendition of the word. A noun describes something in its nominative form. But the word episkopos is a verb. It is not who you are. It's what you do. If you don't do it, you ain't it anyway. You ain't nothing. You ain't nothing. I ain't nothing. A title is a joke. Bishop Brazier taught me, don't you ever let an office magnify you. You bring honor to your office. Give God a praise now. Speak in tongues now. We live, Brother Brazier, in a binary world. I'm going to use some scientific terms here not to impress you but to challenge your thinking because your life cannot change until your mind gets changed too many of us in this organization demean mind development that's why you stay right where you are and God gave you the Holy Ghost and God gave you his mind It is the mind that directs the consciousness. It's the mind that gives you direction. It's the mind that gives you identity. It's the mind as a person thinking. You must think great thoughts or you can't do exploits. You can't. 
create a miracle unless you believe in a God of miracles. You must understand that you are God's vessel. I'm going to go a little bit against some of your theology. God ain't coming to do nothing. Now, Mrs. New in fourth grade English would slap me about this time. God ain't coming to do nothing. God ain't coming to do nothing. He already came, and he's in you. You are the vessel of God. You are the instrument of God. He ain't going to do it. He, you going to do it. He going to do it through you, or it's not going to get done. I'm waiting on God. You ain't, the word wait means to lean on. It means to trust in, not to get lazy because you got a higher rank now. When the pandemic hit, I was as surprised as you were. But let me just share a couple minutes, some things that today gives me chest pain. My arteries are all open. My blood pressure is good. But I have not become immune to the works of darkness. I have not been distracted by the heinous evil of this day. When things become common, we tend to become unnerved. And then we forget how important they are. Can you please tell me how should I react if 3.6.4 million human beings have died from COVID in this country over a million folk died long term COVID is becoming an epidemic we talking about ain't no COVID that, that's just the devil listen to me the thing that has happened to us did not catch God by surprise. That means whatever happens, he expects the church to respond in a certain way. I don't believe in the vaccine. Are you a knucklehead? I don't believe in the vaccine, but I do know it works. I'm going to say it three more times. Okay, let me go, but let me put on my, my professor of hematology hat. Look, in December of 2020, the mRNA vaccine was revealed. At that time in this country, over 4,000 folk were dying every day from COVID. And six months later, it was less than half. In every six months since the vaccine, the death rate has lowered. You think that's the devil? It has to either be the devil or God. We live in a binary world. Whatever is happening is caused by God or the demons. You must differentiate. You must discern. Don't you let these stupid people tell you that we don't need no vaccine. Are you out of your mind? knowledge that's genuine knowledge comes from God do you hear me biology physics ca ca everything that's real comes from him that's called truth the issue is not the truth the issue is how you discern it and I heard people calling me, can you come to our council? Because they tell me the vaccine is the mark of the beast. What? And you apostolic? I thought that the rapture preceded. Now, now if, the, if, if, if the rapture precedes it and I'm still here, So all your musing about it could be, you could be alive too, because you are. I said that. It's, look, you can be well-meaning, but the truth does not care what your purpose is. The truth works when it's applied correctly. You must abide by the truth. You must know the truth. The vaccine was never the mark of the beast. If I had more time, I'd tell you that my good friend, she ain't my good friend, I don't know that. She is my friend, though. I, I worked with Kizia Corbett. 
Is she an apostle? I worked with Kizia Corbett, less than 40 years old, black girl from Baltimore. She owns the first three patents on the mRNA vaccine. The girl is flat out bad. She bad. She a black girl from urban America. She ain't white. She ain't killing nobody. Are you stupid or what? We're living in a day of deception. We're letting the devil deceive us. I don't know what it is in the vaccine. The last 20 doses you got, the other vaccine, you don't know what it is either. You ain't seen polio in 40 years. You have not seen these dread diseases that were coming for years. Why? Because you got vaccinated. Why did you get vaccinated? Because God gave us knowledge. You are fearfully and wonderfully designed for God to give men knowledge to bless your life. I got to get to the end of my sermon. Health ain't the only thing. Can I say what I told my service last week? I am sick and tired of black folk being at the bottom of every academic ladder. You ain't upset. They don't mean nothing. Yes, it does. Look, they want your kids dumb and poor. They want you dumb and poor. They keep their foot on your neck because you let them make you dumb and poor. You ain't made to be dumb and poor. You made to be the head and not the tail. You the lender, not the... The reason your culture's like that because they kept your granddaddy back. Give God praise for liberty. Give God praise for a new day. Give God praise for what you have. When you look at that this generation that's coming in black America, maybe the first one to earn less, own less than their parents, that ain't carnal. That's a work of the devil. That is demonic. That's designed to keep you in your place. But I'm a king's kid. I'm an heir of God. I'm a smart dude. I'm a joint heir. Yeah, I am. Yeah. Yeah, I got money. Yeah. And unless we wake up out of sleep, we're going to keep on being the tail and not the head. The borrower and not the lender. The epidemic of Violence. Oh God. Children in school. But we so stupid as Americans, we allow AK 47s to be brought in. And, 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 and even the, excuse me, y'all, even the white intelligence, well, if the teachers were armed, are you stupid too? A teacher that don't like what you're saying and got a gun in the it's my right. Let me, let me get to my point. Listen, much of what's happening to us is because we have succumbed to the theology of the individual. We have replaced God with our own rights. It's my right. It's your right to drink poison too. Your right and then in the last few years with the pandemic, I keep hearing this stuff. Well, my truth is, I want, I, look, y'all may not believe, I ain't never cussed in my life. I want to cuss. I wanted to cuss. I know how to cuss. I was taught not to cuss. But they tempted me. Your truth is your name, Jesus. How you gonna say what truth is? You ain't the perverter of the truth. Only God says what truth is. Not you. My truth. You, you, you idol, you demon. We've got to go back to the Bible's truth. The earth is the Lord's, the fullness thereof. He is the one. God help me, please. Give me 10 more minutes. The real issue, and, and, and don't get glazed over. I'm going to talk about Einstein. Don't, don't, don't get scared. You, you smart. 
you smart, you can handle this. The issue of the binary world, Bishop, is light and darkness. That's it. Light, the pillar, and darkness. How do you know it? Well, let me give you some sanctified scripture. In the beginning, God created heavens and earth, right? And the earth was what? Void and without form. Now, the, the, the original says, the earth was under chaos like today. We live in a world of chaos. We're living in the day of creation when there was chaos. But the Bible said, but the Lord moved his spirit upon the waters of chaos. And now, now watch what he said. Let there be light. <laughs> Let there be light. And it was. But wait a minute. I read further on that the stars and the sun were not created to the fourth day. What do you mean, God? Let there be light. Ain't no sun. Ain't no stars. But when you got the light of lights, you don't need a sun. You don't need a star. He is the light of the world. Listen to me. Somebody said, the darkness preceded the light. No, the light preceded the darkness. Because God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. I looked at that thing, and I said, that's Old Testament. God said, are you stupid too? The presider quoted the scripture you didn't quote, but he was right. Genesis, in the beginning, God. John, in the beginning, now watch this, was the Word. Now watch this, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. All things were made by the Word, and without the Word was not anything made that was made. Watch this, here it is, here it is, here it is. In the Word was life. L-I-F-E. In the word from the beginning was life. But look what John interpreted. But the life. But the life was the light. But the life was the light. But the life was the light. The life that God promised is light. Can I shout now? Hold up. Now watch the devil. And the light that was the life shine in darkness. In every life of a child of God, there's some darkness. And the reason you can overcome and recover, because even though there's darkness, the light preceded the darkness, and the darkness could not... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh, okay. Can I have this a minute? Comprehend in its derivation is a Greek word. The, 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 the light shined in the darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Well, break down comprehend. It's a compound word. In, in, in Philippians, Paul says, even though I've not already attained bishops, but I follow after. I rush after something, right? Paul said, I have not reached the pinnacle, but I'm reaching for something. But the something I'm reaching for already reached for me. I'm trying to comprehend that which comprehended me. I'm trying to get that what got me. Oh, I feel like preaching. Hold up, hold up, watch this. Break it down, Horace. Comprehend, kata lambano, kata lambano. Well, lambano means take it. Don't ask for it. You want your health? Take it. Don't ask for it. Take it. But the word lambano means take it as if it's yours. You know why? Cause it is. Lambano. Wait a minute. What about kata? 
kata is an intensive. Go at it like you are a hungry dog. Go at it and don't ask no questions. Go at it and don't apologize. Kata lambano means grab it like it's yours and hold to it because it is. Watch, watch this. And the light that came from the life tried to extinguish the light. But it could not katalambano it. Every demon on your track has no power over the light that's in your life. Cut your hands now. God's power in your life is greater than any demon, any devil, any curse. Satan is a liar and he ought to be under your feet. I'm going to sit down, Presider. When you understand it's a binary world and either you're walking in darkness or you're grabbing more light, I won't deal too much with Einstein, but you know I'm, you know I'm an egghead. I'm a nerd. I confess it. So five months ago, when God said light and darkness, you know, I'm an academic, so I went to Einstein. And I went to when he first developed the laws of relativity. I said, God, what do I got to do with, with you? God said, don't be stupid. I prepared you for this. And I looked at Einstein's first writings. He was trying to understand time and space. We live in a time-space continuum. Whether you believe in Star Wars or Star Trek is irrelevant. You live in a time-space, and when I come back the next time, I'll break it down. There's three space dimensions, up and down, right and left, forward and backwards. There's one time dimension. Now watch this. Einstein said that the universe must consist on the time-space continuum. And somehow he figured out E equals mc squared now y'all don't like that but i do because it's about the universe and i know the author of the universe his name is jehovah to sit canoe he's a mighty god he's the one that made us in him we live and move i give him praise for einstein and so the c which is the constant in the equation is really the speed of light can i have oh god the Light travels at, you can't even believe it, you can't even think this out. Look, look, watch, watch. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. Light travels at 186,000 miles per second. The Milky Way, which is a dot in the galaxy, is over 100 million light years away. I'm getting happy right now. God, you are bad God. You, you, are, you are bad God because all Einstein did was discover what you created. I give God the glory and the praise that I live in a time-space continuum. I'm going to close it right here. So brothers and sisters, be aware be aware of the time you're living in don't shout around the time shout because you got the victory over every demonic force shout because of you bishops who your job is not to walk in the honor of your title. I rebuke you if you do, and I rebuke me if I do. Because if you wasn't a bishop before we laid hands on you, you still ain't a bishop. We just call you that. If the thing cracks and has wet feet and likes water, I don't care what y'all call it, it's still a duck because that's the truth. That's what it is. Give me some soft music. At, at my church, they start playing softly, so I'll quit. I'm serious about this part. The issue of death, disease, evil, hatred, lying, all from Satan. 
The thief only comes to steal and kill and destroy. Don't help him. But I've come. <laughs> Give I a praise. Give God a praise. Give Christ a praise. I have come that you might have life. And that ain't no ordinary life either. I don't mean just spiritual life. Y'all nuts. Blessed in your body. Blessed in your mind. Blessed in your marriage. Blessed in your family. Blessed in your business. Blessed in your thinking. Blessed, blessed, blessed. Life in every aspect that God intended. Nothing less. Anything less is a lie. When the pandemic hit, and I had begun to be assigned by the Lord to go around the world and talk about this. God reminded me about something. Going up in the church and becoming a pastor, I asked God, why are you sending me to medical school? God says, so who was smart now, you or me? God knows what he's doing. You must learn to trust him and what he's doing, not what you think or your loyalty to some people. My hope is built Testament. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and rights. I dare not trust anybody, even myself. The number one casualty of all the pandemics, whether it's racial, economic, biologic, is all the same thing. We have shot truth in the street. We have shot truth in the street and the rescuer called integrity is intimidated and afraid to help him. Don't you be like that. Don't you be like that. If you must hazard your life for Christ, then do it. You must not be popular. You must be truthful. And the truth is not what you preach only. It's what you live. It's what you embrace. It's what you hold in your heart. Everybody st stand with me. Stand up. I'm going to quit. I'll, I'll leave the third law alone. I want truth in my life. I'm not trying to hurt the PAW or PCAF or any of y'all. War. But I will not be bought. And you can't intimidate me. God's been too good to me. God's been too kind. Boy, if, if you close the door, he'll open three. I'm a witness. I ain't just talking. I'm a witness. That black boy whose mother died when he was 10 years old and he was raised in poverty. God. <laughs> and lived in the projects and had holes in my shoes. I wore one pair of pants for three years. That was then, this is now. All because of God's truth toward me. If I could, I'd tell you to join hands, but don't do it. Just stand where you are. Can I, can I take privilege? Can I give you an apostolic blessing? Every bishop that's being ordained, the folk under your care should be made better. They must be empowered. They must be strengthened. They must believe that because of you, their best days are not behind them. They're ahead of them. That's your job. Not to get honorarium only. It'll come, but seek first the kingdom. Father, I give the blessing of the Levites, of Aaron, to this congregation that I'm a part of. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord in this day of diabolic pandemics makes his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. I pray the Lord lift up his panim, his countenance, his shekinah upon you and never turn his back on the PAW and give us peace, shalom, health, wealth, influence, prosperity, to the glory of God in a day of deception, be a truth teller in Jesus' name.
That's it. Put your hands together and give God a praise. I weep along with him. I think if you would understand the move of God that you would also be feeling the urgency and the pull of God this morning. God does not make a mistake. I don't thank Bishop Smith at all. I don't thank you, my beloved brother, but I thank the God in you. I thank the God in you, and I thank the God in me that allowed me to see the value of you presenting to us this morning. Because if we ever before need to understand who we really are, it is today. If there ever was a time that we not walk around here boasting about we're the oldest apostolic organization, but that we start understanding that God has called us. We have a job to do. Souls are dying everywhere. Folk are going to hell and we're buying our suits and our dresses and our hats and our cars and let me stop, but this is, this is what we, we must be mission minded. I'm not just talking about in Africa or India or Pakistan. I'm not just talking about in South America, but I'm talking about in every city, every hamlet, every village. We must reach for in this, these United States. Where they say charity begins where? At home. One more time, again, I don't want to praise men. I want to praise our God. Because as God, as we praise him, he continually blesses our leaders to come forth in truth and honesty to help us. I've been blessed this morning. I don't know about you. Come on, come on, give God a praise. I woke up early this morning and I thought about, Lord, Lord, we got to get out of bed and come down here. But oh, I'm so glad. I didn't have my potatoes and my omelet and my sausage, but I had me a good meal. Boss! Oh! Oh! I just had a good meal. My God. I'm about full. I'm about bubbling up. Come on, again. We've got to give God another praise, y'all. We don't y'all don't understand how blessed we really are. As I call for the candidates, I would ask them to come forth and join us here on the podium. Bishop elect, I'll call you to stay where you're at right now until I call you. Bishop elect, Michael Bender and Lady Betty Bender over the 51st District of Northern Philippines District Council. Bishop elect Radar Johnson and Lady Rhonda Johnson, the 54th Episcopal District, Dominican Republic District. Bishop elect Brian Hamilton, 59th Episcopal District, Venezuela District Council.
Bishop elect William Benson, Lady Rachelle Benson, the 67th Episcopal District, Southern California District Council. Bishop elect Paul Karanja, the 71st Episcopal District, Northern Kenya District Council. Lady Karanja is not here. Bishop elect Lafayette Boyd and Lady Ernest Boyd, the 77th Episcopal District. Belize District Council. Bishop elect Avery Burrell and Lady Deborah Burrell, the 73rd Episcopal District, Costa Rica. And Bishop elect Stephen Foster, Lady Merrill Foster, the 74th Episcopal District, Columbia District Council. As we gather here this morning, if they can move down just a little bit, or let's come down just a little bit so we don't have y'all so tight up there. Spread them across a little bit. Amen, amen. Put your hands together again one more time. We are gathered here today to officially bring to fruition that was God had purposed and ordained before the foundation of the world. As God has spoken to the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 1 verse 5, he says, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee. And I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. My dear brothers, he has done the same for you. I firmly believe that the steps of one who is called a worshiper or a praiser is ordered by the Lord. However, this consecration is a most serious and holy occasion. You have an awesome responsibility to care and the nurture of the flock of God because he has purchased it with his own blood. You must understand and know that you will be held accountable by God for the training and development of his flock. It is your responsibility to aid in the area of your calling in order to make the ministry a viable one, reaching the souls of men and women while also meeting the needs of mankind, thereby supporting a holistic ministry. Each of you, and it was so eloquently put in the word today, carry your own separate and independent ideas. 
these ideas should always be supported by your leader's vision without stifling your own growth. Let me leave this thought with you as a model for spiritual success. And that is, you must say to yourself, I am responsible. I'm not responsible for how people treat me, but I'm held accountable to how I respond. The bishop and the Honorable Bishop Smith has so eloquently broke down this today for us because too many of us just want a title. It ain't about a title. It's about a calling. They say in a marriage ceremony that I tell them all as they come, if you're not ready for it, leave. Walk out. I told a gentleman that. I told him, you don't need to get married, man. You should leave. He didn't then, but he did six months later. The bishop is one who is chosen by God first. Did y'all hear that? Chosen by God first, accepted by the people second. He or she should be of a, a good reputation, honest, respectable, and diligent in all affairs. The bishop should be high enough to be respected by all, yet humble enough to be reached by the youngest. The bishop should have capable men and women working in his or her cabinet that are competent and trustworthy. The bishop should also maintain a close relationship with the trustees and the finance department to make sure that the corporation is always sound and sol solvent. The bishop should have a primary concern of feeding the flock of God with God's precious word that the family of God may be able to grow thereby. The bishop is one who has proven themselves in financial and civic affairs and one that is able to rule in their own household. Great leaders, brothers and sisters, are ordinary people who do extraordinary things because circumstances demand, made demands of their potential. True leaders have nothing but themselves to work with and to rise to the top despite the weaknesses. Leaders learn from others, but are not made by others. To be an effective leader, you may listen to all, but in the end be responsible for your decision. You must be able to govern yourselves with self-control, as well as be able to control your anger. You cannot conquer kingdoms I like this, what Bishop Smith said. It's all up here. Because if you can't control that mind, you can't control anything else. You cannot conquer kingdoms until you have conquered yourself. Leaders master themselves. And now, my brothers, you have been chosen by God, and the people have affirmed their trust in you by claiming your election. And no man take this honor unto himself, Hebrews 5, 4 to 6. A bishop in God's holy church is called to, the, to, be, to one with the apostles in proclaiming Christ's resurrection and interpreting the gospel and to testify to Christ's sovereignty as Lord of lords and King of kings. You're called to guard the faith unity and discipline of the church to celebrate and to provide for the administration of the ordinance of the new covenant to ordain pastors and to be in all things a faithful pastor and wholesome example for the flock of God with your fellow bishops you will share in the leadership of the church throughout the world your heritage is the faith of the patriarchs prophets, the apostles, the martyrs, and those of every generation who have looked to God in hope. Your joy will be to follow him who came, not to be served, but to serve 
and to give his life for a ransom for many. I'm asking my first assistant to come at this time, and he's going to read part of the examination, and then I'll ask our second assistant to join us. Please open up your books. Bishops, have you persuaded that God has called you to this office of bishop? Please say that so we can hear you. I am so persuaded. Will you accept this call and fulfill this trust in obedience to Christ? Will you be faithful in prayer and in study of the Holy Scriptures that you may have the mind of Christ? Will you boldly proclaim and interpret the gospel of Christ, enlightening the minds and stirring the consciences of the people who you will serve? As a chief pastor, will you encourage and support all baptized people in their gift and ministries, nourish them from the riches of God's grace, pray for them without ceasing, and celebrate with them the ordinances of our redemption? Will you serve as a shepherd to the poor? and indigent families of the communities? And will you stand and support the need for social justice in the field of humanity, declaring what is right to establish equality for all human beings in accordance with God's holy word? Will you guard the faith, unity, and discipline of the church. Will you work alongside your presiding bishop and serve in submission as a bishop in the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World Incorporated? Will you share with your fellow bishops and the government of the whole church? Will you sustain your fellow presbyters and take counsel with them? Will you guide and strengthen the deacons and all others who minister in the church? Will you be merciful to all, show compassion to the poor and strangers, and defend those who have no helper? Are you persuaded that the Holy Scriptures contain sufficiently all doctrine required of necessity for eternal salvation through faith in Jesus Christ? And are you determined out of the same Holy Scripture to instruct the people committed to your charge and teach and maintain nothing as required of necessity to eternal salvation but that which you shall be persuaded may be concluded and proved by the same. Are you ready with faithful diligence to banish and drive all erroneous and strange doctrines contrary to God's word and both privately and openly to call upon and encourage others to do the same? Lastly, will you maintain and set forward as much as shall lie in you, quietness, love, and peace among all people, and such as shall be unquiet, disobedient, and criminal, correct, and punish according to such authority as you have by God's word, and as shall be committed unto you. 
ask our second assistant presider, Bishop, to come and anoint each one of these candidates. Start, Bishop Carranza, and come down. I ask you also to anoint the wives, because that's going to be an integral part of their ability to do the work of God. As we get ready to go before the throne of grace, looking under the altar and the finisher of our, of our faith, asking God to move upon you. I'm going to ask our speaker, if you will, Bishop, God has given you a word today. And I've learned to take that word and like the good cake mama makes, you get every bit of the crumbs. You still got some crumbs left in you to share with us this morning and do your prayer. Will you honor us and God by praying for them? Let us all stand together, all of our fellow colleagues. The, 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 it, the, the assistant presider, Bishop, and I will go and lay hands on each one as our former presider prays. We stand as a community of faith. You go not by yourselves, but you go with all those gifts, all those resources we share in the Holy Spirit. Father, in Jesus' name, we bow ourselves before your holy throne. We thank you for ordination that is God-oriented. We praise you right now for deliverance in the Spirit. We thank you for wholeness of body, soul, and spirit. Each one that will go, each bishop, their companion, endue them with power and authority. Give them holiness and grace. Give them wisdom and understanding. Keep them from every act of the enemy. Cause them to cause your church through your spirit to grow and prosper in the name of the Lord. Anoint their going in and their coming out. Protect them from all enemies. Keep them together with one mind and spirit. Cause them to be prosperous in every act of faith. We believe right now that you're doing it we know you're God Almighty. Have your way right now. We declare it as a people. We declare it as a nation. We declare it as the kingdom of God that they shall live and not die. Do this work to your glory, honor, and praise. And we'll thank you and we'll praise you and give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Give God praise right now, everybody. Clap your hands and give the Lord praise. Is anointed fall on me. Come on, y'all. Anointing. God let your anointing fall on me. Well, well. Let the power of let the power of Holy Ghost. Oh my. shall proceed me and the first and second assistant to now put on your vesture the bishop is wearing the sacred when I step to go and 
put it on as I read this. Bishop Rogers, why don't you step out and participate in this? In the back behind the bishop. The wearing of the sacred Kazakh and Roshan. The Kazakh is a servant garment. The bishop should wear this garment in deference to our Lord Jesus Christ, who instructed these words, they who will be chief among you shall be servants of all. Yeah, Bishop. Bishop Gators here. Come behind Bishop Hamilton. Bishop Merritt, come behind. There's two out of the Southern California District Council. The Rochette is the garment of the priesthood. This was given to Aaron and his son is a symbol of true devoted worship of the true one true and living God. They will also be given the Shemir and the bishop's scarf to tip it. The Shemir is symbolic of the bishop's prophetic office as a chief preacher and defender of the faith. The scarf or the tippet is a symbol of the yoked one. The tippet bears the official seal of the bishop and seal of the Pentecostal assemblies of the world. Let your anointing, let your anointing, let your anointing, oh my. Anointed, oh, 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 Somebody help me tell him anointed. Say, yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Let it fall, let it fall. Let 
Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, by the authority invested in me as the presiding bishop of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the World, I am pleased and proud and happy to present to you, by starting on to my left, the Honorable Bishop Michael and Lady Betty Bender. Bishop William and Lady Rochelle Benson, Southern California District Council. The Bishop Lafayette and Lady Ernest Boy. A Belize. Come on, put your hands together again. Somebody in heaven now is having a good time if that was the case. The Honorable Bishop Burrell, it would be so happy. Avery, Bishop Avery and Lady Deborah Burrell. many snares and tall we have already come. The Honorable Bishop Stephen and Lady Merrill Foster. The Honorable Bishop Brian Hamilton. The Honorable Bishop Radar and Rhoda is it Rhonda? Rhoda Johnson. All right. And the man from Kenya who started to work in Kenya, the Honorable Bishop Paul Karanja. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, give God a great praise for all these great women and men of God. Oh, wait a minute. We have some certificates, Bishop Benson. Yeah, Bishop J uh, J Jackson will bring these down to you. Let me read it to you. Apostolic decree. 
known by all men by these present under the guidance of the Almighty God with the purpose of his glory. Executive Board hereby elects Bradoff Johnson to the sacred office of Bishop Rick, a person who we deem well qualified for the work, therefore will stand in support of him as the enhanced and strength of the body of Christ through corporate fellowship and networking so as to promote unity and build collaboration that will provide spiritual support to believers and to bring together affiliation in the church and the ministries of light to formally laid a collective body autonomous entities under the nurturing of the Pentecostal Assemblies of the world. I want to do something that I hope that I would have had the opportunity to do while he's here, but please escort Lady Charlene Dawkins to the podium. We never know what God is doing or why God does what he does. All we simply can do is humbly bow to the will of God. My sister, I give this to you. In the absence of our, my friend, my buddy. certificate for the elevation of office for the Honorable Bishop Roy C. Dawkins. Dated March 17, 2022. Can't say much more without losing it all. But just put our hands together for a great man of God and a great woman. unless you all want to be seated since you're on the front row anyway and then they'll come back for photo ops and to receive I'm going to ask our ushers if you'll grab some baskets we want to pass the baskets keep you from walking everybody can get a $20 seat in your hand and we're going to pray and then if we could just pass some baskets uh, that'll keep us from walking ask everyone uh, to participate in giving. Didn't we hear a wonderful word this morning? Anytime you are served by God, you ought to be willing to sow into uh, that word and that anointing. And so I'm going to ask everybody that can and will to get a $20 seed. And I'm going to ask our ushers will prepare uh, to pass some baskets. I don't know how we're going to do that, but I know that you all are so creative uh, that we can get it done. Amen. Uh, if you are giving by uh, credit card, you can still come up and uh, give on either side. I believe they have uh, credit card machines. They will process your credit Bishop, I'm looking at you and I'm having a brain freeze. My New York friend. 
Bishop Dobbs, please come. I want you to offer prayer for us this morning as we prepare to receive this offering. Put your offering in your hand. Put your offering in your hand. So as the basket comes down, please don't make change for yourself. There's no change in this offering, so just get out whatever you're going to put in. Amen. We are going to give to the glory of God. Bishop Dobbs. Gracious Lord, we thank you and we praise you for this service. We bless you for the word that was received, uh, that filled our soul, and we thank you, Lord, for your spirit abiding. We ask that you bless this offering. Bless the seeds that are offered, Lord, to your glory. We ask that it be received, Lord, and that the upbuilding of your kingdom, your power, your glory continues to move forward. We bless you, Lord, for every sacrifice. We bless you for every heart, Lord, that is depositing this seed today. And we'll forever thank you, praise you, and bless you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. As they begin to pass the receptacles. More than anything, I love you, Jesus. Yeah, I love you, Jesus. 